reports Trent Richardson was cut by the Raiders in what is his third team since being drafted number three overall by the Browns in 2012 behind Andrew Luck and RG3. Oakland gave Richardson $600,000 in guaranteed money this offseason. Ryan, your reaction? I have no reaction because this should have happened a long time ago. Really? Trent Richardson is the worst running back of all time. Stop of it. all time? Stop it. All time. Ugh. There's a freshman that goes to University High in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, named Michael Hollins, that I will take on my team right now, right now in the NFL before I got trained. I need Richardson. to tell him be nice now. I can't yeah. even, I can't believe they gave him $600,000 guarantee, and they gave it to him to go away. They did. Can you imagine that? Okay. If somebody said, man, I'm going to give you all this money just so you never That's run the, the ball. That's not the first time that happened So in the you NFL. never run the ball for us okay. ever again. Did you think this when he was coming out no, of Alabama? No, I thought he was the man. Really? I, I, went to, I went to Coach Tomlin. I was like, Coach T, because it was news that Cleveland was mm -hmm. going to be getting yes. So I went to Coach T. I was like, Coach T, man, Cleveland's going to get Trent Richardson. Mm -hmm. I was like, we're going to have to hit this dude. Coach Tomlin says, he's like, I hope they do. Because at that time, he felt like uh, Blackman would be a better football player coming okay. out of Oklahoma he State. Yeah, it's off the field, the field. And so he was like, you rather them get Trent Richardson than get Justin Blackman. And I was like, why? He said, because he doesn't dish out punishment, deliver punishment. He just absorbs punishment. <laughs> that's and, he was, word. That's, and he said, he said yeah. in college kids, you got to realize, he was playing behind an NFL offensive line. Those guys at Alabama now on NFL rosters. And college defensive backs got tired of hitting him. His, his exact words to me were, do you think you, Debo, and Troy are going to get tired of hitting Trent Richardson. Mm -hmm. He's like, he won't make it in the league. And well, he was right about that he's one. He's a prophet. He's the yeah. running back prophet. Wow. Now, now seriously, th okay. there's some hyperbole operating here because I, I could go back and I don't have time because we're about to run out of show, but I could show you a lot of running backs who are worse than him. <laughs> but but <laughs> right. maybe not high, high, high pick running yeah, backs exactly. who were much worse than, than he was. Yeah, and, it, it was, it's, and obviously yet, his guy. Is it yeah. possible? He was somewhat a product of a dominating Alabama offensive line that allowed his first contact to be four, five, six mm -hmm. yards upfield, and then he absorbed con contact in college football, and they got tired of absorbing it back. So he could just run over people or through people and get away with it in ways he couldn't hear. I also have to to compliment the great Jim Brown. Remember what he said? He said, he said, he said right away. Oh, right. He took a lot of he flag yes. Cleveland Input, for yeah. saying he can't play. He definitely you, said it. He, yeah. Jim and Brown says you can't there, play? Yeah. Listen, I, trust, I trust what he says. Listen, I have been around the great Jim Brown several right. times. And, and he looked and like he, a hater when hey, he said it. Hey, listen, Jim Brown knows. Mm -hmm. He knows. He has these. He can see it, mm -hmm. feel it. Jim Brown is underutilized by the NFL. He, he should have been a coach. He should have been a personnel director, you know, what, whatever. Jim Brown knows who can play and who can't, and he proved it once again. The sad part about Trent Richardson, though, he was a star in high school. I remember when he was at Alabama playing behind Ingram. I said to myself, this guy's probably better than Mark Ingram was. You want him to come in the league and do well, and I think it's a sad situation that he wasn't it, it was, able to live up. It was very sad. I, I don't know if this is his last stop, but it kind of feels like mm -hmm. it might be. Right. At age 25, boy, that a lot of people wouldn't have predicted that. When you get picked Ooh. third, though, people give you shots, so they can bring him in for free. Maybe, Maybe. somebody. Ryan, you're with us often. Sorry to cut you off, but not usually the whole show. Thank yep. you so much. So many great points. Skip had a couple. I had that one. You, you, you had, one. You had that one. You had your, that one. Your bar is set so high. Right 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 You'll be on NFL Live later. Nelly is with us tomorrow. Nelly. Stephen right. A is still off. We miss you. Disagree with my decision. It happens all the time. Uh, but I believe uh, the course of action we chose in here really is in the best interest of. USC and Steve Sarkeesian and maybe just as importantly or more importantly, our players. So that was USC Athletic Director Pat Hayden on Trojans Live on ESPN Radio explaining why he chose not to disband USC head football coach Steve Sarkeesian after his embarrassing behavior at the Salute to Troy event on August 22nd. Skip, do you have a problem with the way Pat Hayden handled this situation? Molly Ryan, yes I do. L let me just say more to the point, I'm just not completely comfortable with the way Pat Hayden dealt with a close friend of his and Steve Sarkeesian. I've known Pat for a long, long time. Back in the day, I actually covered Pat when he was a quarterback of the Los Angeles Rams out of USC. He's a pretty good quarterback, by the way, for being a pretty little guy. <laughs> I admire him. 
I believe in him. I believe in his value system. But he's very close with Steve Sarkeesian. I know he likes him immensely. Most people who cover him or meet him, I've met him just recently here. I think I met you, him. You also did. I had dinner with him. Did you? You had yeah, dinner with him. Yeah, he's he was awesome. I was trying to convince him that hey, I got a son that's in that's a freshman. You know what I mean? He's going swing down Louisiana. So really, yeah, interesting. So, I, I think, so you would send your son to I think play for him? A, I think after that meeting, you know, I would. Depending on how this shapes up, I mean, people make mistakes. Oh sure. No, yeah, I I got mistakes, it. So yeah, I'm cool with that. Okay, so now we're back to what exactly is going on here. If, in fact, Pat Hayden's friend, Steve Sarkeesian, has a problem, and I'm not sure exactly how to define it, but if, mm -hmm. if it, you can define it as mm -hmm. a problem, right. then as his friend, Pat Hayden should have exercised more tough love and forced him into a sabbatical, into some sort of rehabilitation situation where he needed to go away and fix his problem, if, in fact, it runs that deeply. I don't really want to hear Pat say, well, I'm told his counseling started off well. That was the quote yesterday. Right. What does that mean? Counseling started off well. We've made jokes about the old Riley Cooper situation where he was sent away for the for weekend. weekend. Yeah. yeah. Counseling. Well, what counseling? Well, is that what's going on here? Because Pat was in a tough spot. USC's been down a little bit for a while. Now you have a veteran savvy quarterback in Cody Kessler coming back, and I saw Sarkeesian here and likes his chances, man. Yeah. A lot of people like their chances. I'm, I'm seeing it all the way up to ranked fourth in the country, but they are a top ten team, so clearly they have a shot at making the Final Four, the postseason this year. Mm -hmm. Probably going to win that conference. So do you send away your coach because he has a problem on the eve of what could be a, a breakthrough season? You'd be back on the national map. It's a tough call. Pat Hayden did what he thought was best for the program, maybe more so than for his friend, Steve Sarkeesian. That's my take. Let's also point out this is the first year they're not under the NCAA yeah, sanctions that's anymore. Good as point. Well. So Steve Sarkeesian, just when I met him, was, was genuine. He was fun. He was bright. Um, he wasn't behaving the way no. he behaved there. So I don't know if it's a problem. I've only seen him that one time, and he was fine that night. So for me, I don't know how deep this runs. He came out and said afterwards he didn't have a problem. It was a mix of medication and a mix of alcohol. So I will take him for his word. Well, he word. actually said he didn't know if he had a problem. It was his so, response. Okay, so, so go ahead. So, so we take him for his word. He yeah. doesn't know if he has mm -hmm. a problem. He's going to get help. I don't know if Pat Hayden fell victim so much to his love for Steve Sarkeesian as he did his love for the USC Trojans. He's a guy that went to school there. Yeah. He played quarterback there mm -hmm. for him to have to live through the Lane Kiffin mm -hmm. era and the Lane Kiffin tenure probably killed him inside. It probably and, did. And we're going into a year, Cody Kessler is a guy mm -hmm. who's going to be up for the Heisman. Yeah. This great interception to touchdown mm -hmm. ratio. They're finally ranked in the top 10. People are picking them to make the playoffs, playing in the Pac-12, which is going to be extremely tough division this yeah. year. If you come out of there, you probably do make the BCS playoffs. And he was faced with the decision. Do I make the decision that maybe puts my team in jeopardy, my school, the place I love in jeopardy of not accomplishing all these things? Like you said, we are on the eve of accomplishing to help Steve Sarkeesian when I don't know how deep it runs. You know, he talks about the meeting they had and, and how forceful he was. And I know Steve got my point. I got my point across very sternly and these different things. I don't know if he was worried so much about getting Steve Sarkeesian help as he is about the USC Trojans being a good football team, winning get early games okay. in the season, and not disrupting that. So for me, I don't think he handled it well from this standpoint. Whether he has a problem or not, the public perception is whatever you have going on wasn't was more important than you being able to function at this important event. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a kid on that team, if I'm a parent of a kid on that team, and I'm trying to explain to him how to behave, how to conduct himself, how to be an adult and be responsible, be accountable, I can't say that Pat Hayden held him to the standard I would want him to be held as, as a man who's now a mentor, a coach, the safe keeper mm -hmm. of my child while I'm away, while he's at that school. Mm -hmm. So for me, Pat Hayden has to make a different decision for the program. And if the kids are really who's important to you, you set a tone that 
not only are you going to be held to a high standard, but the people that we put in charge of coaching you, the people we put in charge of recruiting you, are going to be held to a higher standard. So now, when Steve Sarkeesian sits in the kid's home and he talks about his rehabilitation process and the things he's had to do to be the coach of the USC yep. Trojans, part of it is I made a mistake, I was punished sternly and harshly, I accepted it, I'm better now, and if you go through things, I can also help you. Mm. He can't preach that to kids when he sits in their home. And that's where Pat Hayden made the mistake. I, I completely agree. And yet Pat allowed the players, the leaders of the team, to quote unquote punish the coach that the way they would. It was a joke. Thank you right. very much. I was going to say it, I laughed. That really that. was right. a joke. Because to to punish a coach the way you would be punished for missing a meeting or being late to a meeting right. by by running some sprints or up downs it's or whatever it is, deal. it's just. It, it doesn't equate. Mm -hmm. So if you're a player on the Trojan team right now, a leader on that team, have you lost some respect for the head coach? I don't know necessarily if, if you've lost respect for the head coach, but here's, the, here's when you lose the respect. Here's when it becomes an issue. If I'm a player, we win a big game on Saturday night. I'm in L.A. I go party. I get a little... I, have a couple. Yeah. Yeah. I'm walking down the street. I have disorderly conduct. Mm -hmm. And now it comes time to punish me. Yeah. Are you going to make me run? Does he do they punish me by up doing downs, by doing up downs? Or are you gonna try to suspend me? Will I be held to a higher standard than you hold your coach? Mm. So that's where your issue comes in. How do you discipline players now? once they get in trouble. Mm. I think three main points here. Is he protecting his guy? Is he protecting the school? Or are you sending a message to your kids? I just truly hope it's an isolated insolent and, mm. and uh, that we'll see moving forward. How's Oakland handling this, gentlemen? The Raiders are paying Trent Richardson $600,000 to not play with the team. Mm. Ryan Clark believes mm. he knows why. Gonna, I can't wait you for gonna this. You going to tell us? I'm Educate tell us. You guys. You